Hello everybody, it's Mark Curley. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Um, I want to try something really kind of unusual today, and that's focusing on the technique of uh, color pencil, pastel, different things that I mix together. Uh, so, let's see if uh, people get a kick out of this. I'm going to start off by uh, adding a layer of gray watercolor. Um, and the what I'm going for here is uh, a kind of mid-tone. Not too dark, not too light. Certainly, you don't want to go too dark. That would be the biggest problem. You don't want to. You don't want to go in real heavy. Uh, and when I say go light, that means you're adding more water to the paint. Uh, the more water you add, obviously, the lighter it gets. Um, but I'm trying to make it at least a certain uh, depth of tone so that uh, later on when I add some highlights to it, those highlights will show up. And by highlights I mean little white dabs of uh, white gouache, a real thick uh, water-based paint. Now one of the nice things with doing a stone-like surface is I don't have to worry too much about this gray layer of watercolor being perfectly even. If I were trying to uh, paint the sky, for example, you want a nice smooth blue sky. Well, that is very uh, challenging to do with watercolor. Um, and I may, I guess, someday try to do a video like that. But the truth is I'm not that good at doing uh, a nice smooth uh, blue sky in watercolor. It's a lot of times I resort to other uh, techniques for getting that effect. Anyway, happily, with doing a stone surface, uh, it can be a little uh, uneven. In fact, you probably want it to be a little bit uneven, seeing how I'm adding in little extra uh, splotches here and there to kind of make it a little less perfect. Um, one thing that you need to be aware of, even from the very beginning at a uh, stage like this, is the light source. And, uh, you know, a lot of our teachers talk about this, and I think kids probably <laughs> roll their eyes and say, oh, man, I don't want to study about light and shadow. But it really is important. Um, in this case, I have the light coming from the upper left-hand side, so the most of the shadows are going to be falling off to the lower right-hand side. That's almost my kind of default uh, choice when I'm doing something like this. Uh, my reasoning is that I uh, am right-handed, and if I keep all the shadows uh, on the right side, then I won't have my hand on top of the artwork. Uh, and uh, so you'll see that if, if you look through my illustrations, my artwork, um, I would say nine times out of ten, probably. The uh, light source is the upper left, causing these shadows to fall on the uh, lower right. So let me zoom in just a little bit, maybe, to give you a little more detail, because I know my video quality is not the best. Hold on just a second. Okay, so I've zoomed in a little closer here, and uh, what I'm trying to create the effect of here, this is the logo for my manga series, Miki Falls. I'm trying to create the effect of this being sort of chiseled into this stone. Uh, and if you know that the light is coming from the upper left, then in this case the shadows are all sort of tucked into the upper left of this uh, carved out surface. Um, and you know, the more you work on stuff like this, the more you just can kind of imagine the uh, physics, I guess you'd have to say, of, of, uh, of how the shadows fall when light hits a certain object. Um, it comes kind of naturally to me. I never really had to like, I never got super confused about, oh, where are the shadows gonna go? Um, and uh, hopefully you will be the same. The more you do this, the more you'll just get an instinctive sense of, oh, well, if it's carved out, then the shadows are going to go up here. If it's supposed to be popped out, you know, like embo embossed or something, then all the shadows are going to come on this on the opposite edge. So I'm just sort of uh, creating a certain amount of tone all the way through uh, the letter area to create some contrast with the rest of the the stone surface that's you know closer to us um, I'm gonna go ahead and do the rest of these like that but rather than bore you I'm switching now to another 
uh, brush, which is considerably a uh, finer point, and I'm going to be adding some uh, of the stony surface detail in the upper left hand area here. So uh, I'm just going to go in and start adding some little dots here and there. which later on are going to really help to uh, create the illusion of a stony surface. Now just to have fun, I thought I could also try adding a, a kind of crack in the stone. And um, I'm just going to... how about if I first put indicate that with pencil. I've pulled out a pencil here to sort of give myself an idea of where the crack is going to go. Have it just go right through this letter here. And maybe split a little at the top. So I, uh, rather than just go at it directly with the brush, I've given myself a little guideline here. And of course uh, the shadow for this crack is going to go on the upper edge yeah, I guess the left edge of that line that I just drew and that's going to help us create the illusion of a crack running through the stone. Later on again I'm going to come back and add some highlights to this and it's going to uh, complete the illusion. But I'm going to go back to adding a few more uh, little gray dots that are going to help create the stony surface detail of this illustration. Another thing that I like to do instead of making it all dots, I will add an occasional uh, kind of longer line like uh, patch of color in the stone just to add a little more variety so it's not just a whole bunch of dots and little by little as you add these things throughout the surface you're gonna uh, it's already will start to take on more of a stony feel but believe me the real uh, the real illusion begins when you add these highlights at the end and that'll be one of the last things I do in this video um, well let me just uh, pull back I'm gonna complete a little more of this uh, and then uh, we'll start to move on to uh, using other techniques to create this stony surface. All right, so I've pretty much finished up with the watercolor stuff, and now I'm bringing out a piece of uh, pastel, colored pastel. Now be careful uh, that you know, what I'm using here is kind of a dry, uh, chalky pastel, not an oil pastel. An oil pastel won't allow you to get the kind of effects that I'm going for here. Um, I've chosen brown here to add just a little bit of shades of different color. You know, I started with a gray, kind of a standard uh, watercolor gray as a foundation. One of the secrets to making something look a little more solid as a surface is to try to vary the uh, color colors through, uh, throughout that surface and build in different colors. So I'm adding uh, bits of uh, brown here and you can see that I'm, I'm kind of blending it in with my uh, finger as I go. Um, these chalky pastels uh, are are not uh, real permanent. They kind of uh, you have to be careful because they will they smear around. And, but it, it, as you push them in with your finger, like I'm doing, it they will uh, rub off a little less. But you may need for an illustration like this at the end to uh, to spray some fixative. Uh, it's sort of a, it comes in a spray can. Now I added the brown, and now I'm going to switch uh, to something a little different, add a little maybe 
just a little purple here and there. Uh, you might think, but you know, rocks aren't purple. What's going on here? But it's just a little secret uh, to making surfaces look a little more solid uh, by adding in different colors. It just somehow uh, finishes it off and makes it a little more 3D. I'm going to see if I can get away with even adding a kind of uh, reddish color, just a touch of a reddish color here and there. The more little bits of different colors you mix in, the more you get this. Uh, more solid looking effect. And of course the more you uh, the more tone you have in general later on when you add the highlights with the gouache the, uh, the more those little highlights are going to pop and really help complete your 3D effect. Um, I'm going to grab a, uh, a black pencil here my old black Prisma color and uh, just sort of finish off some of the shading uh, that I had started with the um, watercolor kind of touch up. You can see that I'm very much a mixed media guy. I like to mix together all kinds of different things. I mean we've got watercolor here. I added a little pastel. Now I'm going in with the colored pencil and that's just my approach. I, I like the different effects that each tool is uh, most capable of providing and so I just uh, I mix it up. And so you can see what I'm doing there, that's helping it to look a little more 3D and uh, again I'm going in and uh, kind of beefing up the shadow a little bit here. Color pencils are much easier to control in a lot of ways than uh, watercolor, certainly more than pastel which just sort of smears all over the place. So I feel very comfortable when I switch to a colored pencil. I can I can pretty much control exactly where I want things to go. This is all about the interior shadows of these carved out letters. But I'm going to take a moment now to uh, add a little more definition to some of these little nooks and crannies that I was putting in here to make the uh, make the surface look more stone-like. Just sort of defining these a little bit more with. Uh, little hints of black from the black colored pencil. And I'm going to also add just a touch more to this crack that we put in there. Well, I think you got the basic idea of what I'm doing with this. Um, I'm going to pull back and uh, go for the the kind of most fun part of this process, and that is adding the white gouache. Um, I may pull back and then also zoom in to give you a little closer look at, at what the process involves of adding white gouache. So let's go ahead and do that. All right, so um, now we're, uh, we're ready to do the last kind of bit in the process. I'm pulling out a tube of uh, Windsor and Newton designer gouache zinc white. You can see how <laughs> long I've been using this, but it's still works. Uh, pulling off the top here and I'm going to start to add little highlights here. Um, I'm just going to add a few uh, here while you can see the whole image and then I'm going to zoom in so that you can see the actual technique. You got to keep you got to keep it pretty thick um, for it to show up. So you just add enough water to, to get it so it won't be too dry basically. And I'm going to go in and start adding a bit of white to the lower right hand edge of uh, this crack which is hopefully helping that to pop a little bit. I don't think you're going to see so much with this long distance view so I'm, I'm probably going to hurry up and switch to the up close uh, zoomed in view so you can really see the actual process a little better. Um, but I just wanted you to get one good look at the image as a whole as we near the end of the process. Let me go ahead and pick a good area for zooming in and then showing you uh, bit by bit how I add these highlights. Okay, so I've zoomed in super tight here and uh, I'm adding in little white highlights with the gouache always on the sort of lower right hand side of uh, these darker bits that I put in 
earlier and you can see little by little as I drop these things in it helps to create this sort of stone like illusion. Uh, illustrators have been doing this for years and uh, you're going to be the next illustrators to do it I bet. So go ahead and get yourself a little white gouache uh, watercolors, you know, you could, you could also, you could create a lot of these effects with markers, too. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be watercolor, although, you know, watercolor, or markers can leave a lot of streaks a lot of the time, and that, that drives me crazy, so, um, certain really light markers I can, uh, I can use, but, um, for some reason, the darker they get, the more they leave these little s lines, you know, as uh, as you, s you you try to create this uh, smooth surface with markers. A lot of times, they leave these little lines with each stroke that you make, and it can kind of be a problem for me. Um, I want to now add just a little bit of white highlight to the uh, opposite sides of these engraved letters. See if I can get away with this. Um, I don't know if, technically speaking, real stone is going to be quite as shiny as this. You know, I'm adding by adding highlights. You're sort of suggesting a shininess that may or may not be <laughs> part of what you get with real stone, but. I'm just trying to do this to kind of complete the 3D effect. Going to add a little more over here. A bit more over here. This will hopefully help to convey that sort of carved out feeling that we're going for. You're always sort of making adjustments as you go with these things. Add a little bit along the inside of this other other part here. And when we pull back at the end of this process, hopefully this will all look much more like it was carved out of stone than it did just a few minutes ago. Well, we've probably done enough of that for now. Let me go ahead and pull back and we'll see what the final effect looks like. Okay, so there you have it. You can see how we transformed this uh, blank uh, piece of paper almost into much more of a stone-like surface. I hope you found this video useful. Um, you know, this technique is not uh, only for when you want to do some kind of tombstone-like object like this. You can apply this kind of surface detail to almost any object that you want to have a kind of weathered uh, uh, solid looking surface too. Um, I should say before I end this video uh, a, a word or two about this character over here. This is a creature called Anra. Uh, comes from my Miki Falls manga series and uh, uh, I can't say too much about what the character is but uh, it's called a hold spirit uh, and if you read the series you'll find out just what Anra is all about. Um, I think it's time to just wind it down this time. Thanks so much for watching the videos, my friends, and special thanks to anyone who has bought Mickey Falls. I heard from somebody in uh, Europe who said they saw Mickey Falls in their local mall <laughs> in one of these uh, countries uh, in Europe, which just kind of blew my mind. I um, uh, really appreciate uh, the support of, uh, I think, mainly my YouTube uh, fans out there who uh, in Europe are asking their local stores to special order this series. Uh, I can't imagine uh, any other reason why it would be showing up in malls over uh, in Europe. So uh, thank you very much, all of you uh, in Europe who have been supporting the series in England and different places like that. Uh, and of course, special thanks to all my good friends here in America and Canada and uh, all over who have been buying this series. Um, hope you found this video useful. I'm going to wind it down for now, uh, but I will, as always, try to be back with another one real soon.